Find other great podcasts like this one at podmoth.network. Welcome to Haunted Tales, your weekly dose of horror. We've got everything from ghosts, cryptids, and curses to deals with the devil, giant insects, and more. Sit back and enjoy this week's story of the little message from our friends. Riz. Greetings. Gendered language. Onomatopoeias. The ick. What makes some words sound funny? Why just listen to music when you can overanalyze the words in the songs? Music, language, and Eurovision all crammed into one podcast. Getting down and wordy with Russell and Hannah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. You need to wake up, Alessa. She heard the voice whispering quietly and opened her eyes. Was it a dream? She felt strange. Exhausted, like she had been running for days and days on end. Yet at the same time, neither her feet nor calves hurt as much as they should. Wake up, Melissa. The voice repeated again, and its sound pulled her out of her trance completely. She looked around for the first time as she pushed the soles of her naked feet against the floor and slowly started rising up the wall. It was cold, yet hot somehow. Dark, yet bright enough to see everything in this room. Alyssa could feel anxiety in her chest. Where was she? This room didn't evoke any emotions from her. She had never been here before. Every part of her mind told her that. Yet somehow this feeling of being trapped never disappeared completely anyway. Like some part of her knew more than it wanted to let on. I'm up. I'm up. Alyssa replied as soon as she finally stood on her two feet. The wall in her back was smooth, made of wood, strangely warm, yet cold enough that she could feel a slight chill through the cotton shirt she was wearing. Alyssa looked down at herself for the first time and suddenly felt a strange anxiety coming back in full force. What was she wearing? A long, light blue gown, and neither shoes nor socks nor anything else. Flashes of light appeared in her vision as a migraine thundered through her head. Melissa groaned and held her head. The room seemed to wobble around her as she staggered and almost crashed onto the floor. Something in her mind didn't want her to remember. A part of her was working against her. Had it betrayed her? Or was it protecting her? Melissa groaned, then roared as more and more flashes of light kept cutting into her vision, followed by wave after wave of pain. It was unbearable. She felt herself staggering wobbling, almost falling time after time as she continued putting pressure against the side of her head to somehow stop this damned migraine. It didn't let up. Melissa couldn't take it anymore. Her legs wobbled and seemed to disappear as she fell with a scream and hit the floor again. Rough wood scraped her elbows and knees as she cried out, then suddenly collapsed. The flashes of light got fewer and fewer as the pain started receding. She could feel herself breathing, the rough floor pressing against her chest and hot air rising from her body. Besides that, nothing was moving, no sound could be heard and no one answered her screams. What was going on here? 
couldn't say, didn't know or understand what was happening either. Even though the small part of her mind still seemed to try and push her to do something. Alyssa waited until the pain was manageable and forced her hands off her head as she turned her body around and rolled over. Slowly opening her eyes, she could see the ceiling of the room above her. It was made of wood, just like the floor. The same kinds of boards with the exact same color, form, and length. Something stirred in her mind again, but Alyssa still forced herself to stop thinking too deeply about it. It would just lead to more pain. The groan, she closed her eyes and tried to relax. Where was she? She had no idea. This room still evoked no emotion in her mind. Well, almost none. There was part of her trying to get her to remember, but the pain from before made her even more hesitant now. Slowly. She tried to take stock of what exactly she did know. She remembered her own name, Alyssa. That was all, she realized, and felt this anxiety constricting her chest again. How did she come here? Had someone brought her, or had she come on her own? What was she doing in this room? Waiting? Was she locked in? Melissa opened her eyes and looked around. The walls looked just the same as the floor and the ceiling. Everywhere she turned her head, she could see the same wooden boards surrounding her. This wasn't normal. She knew that much. Something was going on here. Melissa got back to her feet. Only this time, she was extra careful not to make any hasty movements that could bring back the migraine. Something inside her told her to move, that it was important that she no longer stay here. She had somewhere to be. Slowly turning around, she looked at the walls again. Every single inch of them looked exactly the same as if someone had simply copy-pasted the texture and reused it, like a video game. There had to be something there, some way, her mind told her. How else would she have gotten in here? With slow, methodical steps, Alyssa started walking along the wall, forcing herself to only concentrate on what was directly in front of her face. The gaps between the boards were all the same as well. Not wide enough to grab onto, immovable, and just about as deep as the tip of her fingernail. She needed to get out of there. A part of her mind urged her again. The sound of her naked feet tapping over the floor continued on as she walked step by step along the wall, rounding one corner after another until she found herself back where she had started. Nothing had stood out to her. No loose board, no nails she might have pulled. Alessa felt doubts clouding her mind. What was she supposed to do now? How could she escape? Her hand wandered up and down one of the boards again before she finally forced herself to stop and take a step back. Somewhere in the back of her mind, that small voice was piping up again. She didn't dare to concentrate on it too long, kept her eyes open to not invite more flashes of light, and tried to steady her breathing. The situation had happened before, something told her. It wasn't the first time, and wouldn't be the last. She just couldn't remember it. That was all. That was a way out. Always. All she had to do was find it. 
Lissa threw her head back and looked at the ceiling again, studying it more closely. The migraine wasn't coming back for now, which meant she still had time to do something. Her eyes wandered along the grooves between the boards. There had to be something there. She turned her body and walked a few steps. Her footfall sounded the same as before. And a strange light, the boards all seemed the same. Yet something was amiss. Some part of the room was different. It had to be. A small detail stuck out to her, and Alyssa froze in place. Almost indiscernible, running along grooves at the other side of the room, she could see it. A slight discoloration on one of the boards. Up on the ceiling, right by the other wall. She could feel a chill inside herself as she started running toward it. Her instincts were telling her that she should hurry up, that this place might no longer be safe. The ceiling was high above, yet she already knew that she could reach it if she tried. Melissa didn't slow down, didn't break her stride as she ran at the wall, jumped, kicked against the boards to push herself up, and extended her arms. The moment her fingers touched a spot, she heard and felt it crumbling, grabbed hold of the edge right above the wall, and endured the shower of small pieces of wood now raining down. She did look, pulled herself up and into the space above the room, where now no light was shining. This was something else she had experienced before. Time and time again, yet forgotten nonetheless. It wasn't like she remembered it now, only felt that it had to be that way. And another emotion bubbled to the surface shortly. Fear. In the darkness, it rains. She heard herself whispering. Alyssa groaned as she pulled her legs up after her and started crawling. This place was nothing more than a path to another room. As big as an air duct, just enough for her to crawl through. While behind her, in the unending darkness, something stirred. She could hear it. The sound of hundreds of tiny, hard feet scratching the ground and walls of the duct. So far away, yet the noise already made her hurry in a panic. She scooted forward, now concentrating on every sound behind her, as her hands touched and probed the floor beneath. There would be an exit shortly, she told herself. Some way to get into another room and out of the darkness in which it lived. Her elbow scraped along the wall, and a part of it gave out. Light fell into the cramped space, and Alyssa pushed through the broken spot with all her might, as the noise of those feet coming toward her was already getting closer. It crumbled as easily as the ceiling in the room before, yet this time it wasn't made out of wood, but some kind of stone. She pulled her legs after her into the light and could immediately hear the sound of those scuttling feet stopping disappearing, as if they'd never existed in the first place. Melissa could feel her pulse hammering in her chest and up into her head. It wasn't like the migraine, at least not as painful, but her body and mind still felt completely terrified. Somehow, on some level, she knew what was in there. Only... She had forgotten it as well. Most of it, at least. But the danger was gone for now, a part of her mind told her, as she let her head sink back for a moment, and she was still listening for the noise of those giant, scuttling insect feet. 
A shiver ran through her, and she felt a sudden cold chill giving her goosebumps all over her body. This thing living in there was hungry and waiting for its chance. Melissa closed her eyes for a moment, tried to breathe in calmly again, and as she opened them once more, the hole in the wall was gone. All she could see were tiles, the same white square shapes all around her. No hole, no dark space, no nothing but a room tiled all over, waiting to be explored. She didn't get up immediately, waited a few more seconds as she breathed in deep, and slowly let her eyes wander up to the ceiling. The same tiles were up there as well. She already knew what she would have to do. Find the exit and crawl through it into the next room before the thing in there catches her. Again and again and again and again. How many times had she gone through this? A single flash of light cut into her vision, turning the off-white tiles blindingly bright and Alyssa immediately stopped her own thoughts from going any further. It was dangerous. She could lose consciousness again, forget again. What she needed right now was something to take her mind off of things. Alyssa? Please, wake up, honey. A strange voice suddenly intruded again, and this time she was up on her feet before the sentence had finished. Looking around, she tried to make out the source of the sound, but could see nothing in this strange, tiled room that could give off any noise. It was as if the sound was coming out of thin air. Please. The voice backed again. Melissa shook her head. She wanted to answer, but didn't dare make a noise right now. Either the migraine would start up again, or worse, the thing between the rooms might hear her and come. She didn't know why she thought that, had no idea if it had happened before or not, but all her instincts screamed at her to keep her mouth shut. The voice had stopped and didn't appear again, even after Alyssa had waited for what felt like minutes. That was something that hadn't happened before, she thought. There wasn't even a hint of recognition in her mind as she carefully tried to concentrate and remember. Nothing. It was no, and no meant bad, part of her mind told her. Change wasn't always good. Just as to get from one room to the next, she had to crawl through the dark space. The new appearance of things could bring with it some kind of danger. She just didn't know what would happen yet. Lissa shook her head. What she needed to do now was clear, at least. Find the next exit, slip through the dark place, and go to another room. How many more times would she need to do this? Would it ever end? Well, it wasn't like she had anything else to do. She couldn't even remember for how long she had been doing this, how many rooms she had already forgotten. Melissa went over the wall on the opposite side of where she'd emerged from and started tapping the tiles. One of them would give she thought. She tapped them softly, one after another, while listening to the noise her knuckles made. It didn't change. Always stayed the same, while the soles of her feet squeaked over the tiled floor as she walked along slowly. It wouldn't end, something inside herself told her. She had just finished the first wall of the room. This was a punishment. She had done something long, long ago before it all started. And now she was locked in this never-ending cycle of boredom, followed by intense panic. 
whenever she changed rooms. Melissa shook her head again. She had long since learned how to push away those thoughts. Giving in to them would drive her mad, she knew. All she had to do was go on, do what she was doing, and one day she would get out of here. Find a room with a door, or maybe an exit sign, somewhere. It would end. This couldn't go on forever. Her knuckles tapped another tile, and instead of the dull sound she had heard before, it rang back hollow. Alyssa took a sharp breath. It would repeat. Again, and again, and again, and again. She pushed against the tile a little bit stronger and felt it crumbling already. Three more of them broke as she hit them with her elbow. Their shards started raining down onto the floor. At least she wouldn't have to jump this time. She tried to encourage herself. It might give her a few more seconds of a head start. Alyssa sucked in air through her gritted teeth as she took a few steps back. There still was nothing moving behind that wall. No feet scratching around there, no sharp hissing sound. She could do it, she promised herself, and felt her body moving forward. Picking up speed was important, she told herself again. She ran toward the opening. Every second might count. She dove forward into the darkness and slid along the floor that felt hard and smooth. Somewhere around her, the skittering sound started up again. It was coming from behind. A long, hard body was uncoiling itself as it began moving toward her. Melissa pushed herself on, crawled as quickly as she could along the small tunnel, and heard her own steps echoing back from the closed-in walls. It was here, she told herself, behind her again, following her and trying to catch up. She forced herself to crawl along quicker and ignored the sound of its dozens of feet scratching the ground. It wouldn't catch up to her, she promised herself. All she had to do was keep going. Alyssa crawled along and heard the thumping of her own knees echoing around her, followed by the skittering of legs. It was coming closer. Still, Nothing was moving at either of her sides. The walls of the tunnel were sturdy. She kept on going and didn't dare to stop and test them. In the darkness, she thought she could see something moving. Elongated bodies covered in carapace. No, that was just her imagination. The sound of the thing in her back was getting louder already. She could make out its feet scratching the floor, its body scraping along the walls as it hurried toward her. Melissa whimpered as she shot along. Memories seemed to scratch at her mind. Being caught in the darkness. Long, sharp mandibles piercing her skin, dragging her back, taking away everything. She cried out as she felt hot air brushing her back. It was coming. I was so close already. Alyssa screamed and felt something hot and wet touching the sole of her foot. She yelped again, jumped forward as best she could, knowing that its sharp fangs would catch her foot the next moment. And suddenly felt the floor beneath her giving way. Her yelp turned into a drawn-out scream as she fell into another room, crashed to the floor with a deafening thump, and felt all the air leaving her lungs. She was dazed and hurt, but as she looked up at the now open hole in the ceiling, she could see something moving there in the weakened light. Her body, long and dark, 
two pincers clicked together as the head seemed uncertain if it should follow its prey or stay up there. Melissa couldn't see its eyes, but she felt it staring down at her. This was her jailer, she thought, and experienced a sudden shock as light exploded in her vision and her head pulsed in the rhythm of her heartbeat. She cried out, closed her eyes and screamed her lungs out, certain this thing would drop down on her any second now. Its legs would scratch her skin as it would bite her again and again, writhing around with her, killing its prey. Melissa forced her eyes open again, wanting to see it coming at least, but then stopped. She could see the ceiling above, carpeted like the floor of an old house, and completely whole again. No monster was looking down on her, No hole could be seen. It was as if it had never existed at all. Melissa rolled her body to the side and felt the soft but dust-covered carpet beneath her as she took a heavy, heaving breath and let out a short scream. It had disappeared. The hole and the monster. Just like any time she entered a new room. The migraine was receding again, its waves no longer shattering her mind, and she still didn't dare move. It was important not to hurry things, especially when it came to this headache. Alyssa tried to tell herself to calm herself down. Yeah, she had time. That was all she had in here, to be exact. Letting out a long sigh, she breathed into the carpet and felt its soft material tickling her skin. Just because she didn't have to rush didn't mean she wanted to stay, though. Melissa could feel a trembling in her arms and legs she absolutely hated. She was afraid of what would have to come next. After she stood up, She would find another broken part in this room, just like every time before. Then she would need to crawl through the dark tunnel, hunted by a monster that looked like an overgrown centipede, and hopefully make it out again. And for what? To repeat the same thing again? Couldn't she just stay here? The floor was soft. She didn't feel hungry. And the monster wouldn't get to her. If she stayed, right? A small part of her mind stirred at the thought. Locked away memories seemed to scratch at the surface of her consciousness. Two words came over her lips. It would. After some time, the rooms would start deteriorating. Holes would open up on their own. And she would have to run again anyway. Only then, it would be worse. One of those things would be in the room while she would have to try and find an exit. Groan escaped her as her head started to hurt. She shouldn't think about it, Melissa scolded herself in her mind. This wasn't the right time. With a groan, She put her face against the carpet, then pushed herself up to her knees. It was time to go on. Melissa stood up and looked at the room. Carpet. Everywhere. It looked like a dumb joke. Well, there wasn't much to do but repeat the whole process again. She walked across the room, choosing a place to start completely at random. But as her foot touched a spot close to the center, Alyssa suddenly froze. The floor beneath her was sagging. That had definitely never happened before. She tried to pull her foot back, but felt her other leg already going down as well. This was bad. A voice in her mind screamed at her as her ankle sunk into the soft material. 
Alyssa flailed about, cried out, and then suddenly felt the floor give way completely as she tumbled into the dark tunnel, heading straight down this time. The light disappeared around her as the wind rushed past. All she could think about, all her mind could concentrate on was the fact that at least one of those things would be in the tunnel she was now falling into. Its pincers would be clicking and its legs and body would coil around her. She put out her hands and felt the smooth, hard sides of the tunnel rushing past her fingertips. Something started clicking below her. Melissa closed her eyes and screamed again. She couldn't break her fall. Pulling in her arms and legs, she rushed toward the clicking noise and could do nothing but hope that it wouldn't bite her anywhere where it would be lethal. With a scream, she felt herself crashing into something long and hard, and an elongated body coiling around her. Hundreds of tiny, sharp feet touched her skin as the thing wrapped whole. Mandibles were clicking, snapping shut next to her ear as they tumbled along together. Alyssa knew it would bite her, screamed again as the hard carapace touched her cheek. And suddenly, both the thing and she broke through another ceiling and crashed onto a new floor. hear it squealing and felt parts of its body getting squished as she rolled over the ground in the room that even in her panicked state was different from anything she had seen before. There wasn't much light nor smooth walls. It looked like a cave. She rolled over once more and jumped up, kicking and pushing the thing away from her body. Innumerable tiny feet left her skin as the thing writhed around on the ground and Alyssa jumped back as quickly as she could. It seemed to be in pain. Its mandibles were opening and shutting frantically. It was thrashing around looking for anything to latch onto but found only its own body. Alyssa took another step back turned her head to not stare at the monster any longer and froze again. Her heart was racing suddenly. She could feel something. Breeze, cold and calm and soothing. It was coming from the back wall and as she looked, Alyssa almost screamed. There was a door in the stone of the cave. She took a step and stopped again. The light in here was dim, completely different from the other rooms, but she could still see something on the floor, all around her, and the thrashing monster at her side. More and more long, dark bodies. They were resting here, she understood, waiting. Alyssa looked up again, at the door. It was close. So, so close. She took a step and could see one of the hundreds of things slowly shifting and coiling as its legs started to push its body off the ground. The monster she had crashed down with was still writhing around. Its tail end touched one of the others. and Before Alyssa could even scream, she saw the sleeping thing waking up. Lightning fast, it was biting down on the wounded one and snaking around its body in a death grip. Lessa couldn't watch any longer. The door was right there. She jumped and ran. More and more of those things were waking up around her, uncoiling their disgusting bodies. And Tene began touching the floor as she rushed by. Just a few steps. This was it. The exit. Her way out. She jumped over one of the things and could see it moving. Its antennae touched her bare leg. Not even a second later, those repulsive pincers snapped shut. 
just a hair's breadth behind her foot. She needed to get out of here. Alyssa jumped again, as the whole floor now seemed to move at once. Chittering bodies scraped over the rough stone ground. The door was close by. She kicked one of the heads rising up and heard the thing snapping its pincers shut. A sharp, chitinous leg touched her calf. Alyssa screamed and jumped, pulling the thing with her. Just a bit more. She stretched out her arm as another body coiled around her. Her scream echoed back from the stone walls. Crying, she felt more and more of those things coming from her. Sharp, needle-like pincers burrowed into her flesh. Just a bit more. With her last scream, she put out her hand and touched the handle of the door. Alyssa opened her eyes. She could see the well-lit white room, and her heart sank. You need to get up, girl, she told herself in her mind, resigned to start again. Her arms and legs hardly moved at all. The sight of centipedes came back to her mind. A shiver ran through her body, as suddenly a soft beeping noise cut into her thoughts. Alyssa looked around in a panic. Moving her head was exhausting. She wasn't lying on a floor, but in a bed. Machines were beeping behind her. Someone was sitting by her side, sleeping in an uncomfortable chair. The memory of the centipede slowly faded. She remembered something else. A car accident. Darkness and pain. Hundreds, thousands of rooms she had clawed through. Her mom's voice telling her to wake up. She breathed in softly and heard the beeping of the machine slowing down as well. I'm back. Alyssa whispered hoarsely. The woman sitting next to a hospital bed opened her eyes. Thank you for listening. And we hope you enjoyed this week's story. If you did, please consider supporting us on buymeacoffee.com slash hauntedtalespod. If you have anything to share with us, be it comments, story ideas you would like to hear, or just cute pictures of your pet, you can find all of our social media links in the episode descriptions. Until next time.